Well, thank you to the entire team who organized the summit. I'm very, very pleased to be speaking with you today. I'd like for us to look at the emerging issues in this area. So first of all, what is Creative Commons? This is the organization I work for. And basically, it is a not-for-profit organization. It was founded in 2001. And it provides licenses and tools called Creative Commons. These are used the world around, and their objective is to facilitate freer and more open sharing of copyright. This makes it easier for people to access knowledge and culture worldwide. So Creative Commons is an organization. It's a series of licenses. But I would also say that above all, it is a community. We're a very vibrant community. People from this organization are active in the four corners of the world and are all united by a desire to share, whether it be music, literary works, arts, educational tools, and, of course, data. And today, this community really is a pillar of the open movement, an open approach that we should take to the world's problems. So, Creative Commons licenses are copyright licenses. They are designed for authors and creators so that those authors can have a way to authorize public use of their works. They were designed to offset the copyright system, which was deemed too restrictive in some circumstances. So in the digital environment, Sharing is very present, but the copyright system as a legal system continued to impose barriers and limits which were deemed unjustified when it came to sharing knowledge and culture and other things that I mentioned. So why is it that we talk about open data? Why open data? So in fact, access and free sharing of data is thanks is a, a big part of our society. For example, it facilitates research among scientists. It facilitates the economy. It ensures more transparency in businesses and in government. And it helps accelerate the discoveries and finding solutions for all sorts of emergencies at the small scale or on a world scale. So Creative Commons licenses help data to be shared, accessible, and used above and beyond all of those limits that are imposed by the copyright system. And we could say that the copyright system is behind in the times. So copyright is not appropriate for many types of data. And Creative Commons recommends for the CC0 tool to be used in some circumstances. CC0 was launched in 2009. And what does it do? Well, people who have the CC0 right have an easier time dedicating their work to the public domain. So their work is placed in the public domain. And that way the work can be used by anyone at any time or any purpose with no restrictions as would exist under the copyright system. However, the creators do need to cite the sources of their data. Now, it's time to get right down to brass tacks. Let's look at some of the emerging issues. For example, database protection, AI and machine-generated data, and ethical questions like protection of, 
personal information. First, for database protection, the database structures can be protected under copyright independently from the raw data that they contain. And in addition to that protection, for example, in the European Union, a regime exists that is a sui generis regime that provides a different type of protection and it recognizes the significant investment that went into that database. And so this uh, sui generis right lets the data be used in a specific way. And the Creative Commons license 4.0 applies to that. So if a database creator wishes to give free access to the data, there is a license for that to facilitate the use of the uh, data in the database. And very recently, the European Union started revising policies around databases and Creative Commons submitted our recommendations and I would like to take a moment to go into that. So we called on the European Union to uh, revoke the sui generis right on databases. We do not want additional layers of laws to end up limiting the use of data. So since the sui generis right came into force 25 years ago, it hasn't encouraged innovation, it hasn't increased competitivity, and it hasn't facilitated free and open access to data. Now, artificial intelligence. There's the question of data use upstream of AI and downstream to see if what is created by AI can be protected by copyright. So first of all, Creative Commons believes that the law should allow unrestricted use of content protected by copyright for learning about the program. There are other concerns beyond copyright. For example, data protection, ethics, and I'll get into this a bit later. So if there were no restrictions, what would be possible? Well, connections would be facilitated, innovation would be enhanced, it would facilitate communication and re re research, etc. Now, during the production phase, upstream, we do not think that copyright should go to data in this case because the content is not uh, human-made, it's not original. And in addition, we think that that kind of protection would be harmful to creation. It would make responsibilities, it would increase responsibilities and would end up being harmful to creativity. Now, if I would like to show you this diagram which explains the different scenarios possible under Creative Commons license. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go into that today. So now I would like to go into ethical issues which are at the heart of the concerns of certain cultural organizations. For example, at her Indigenous heritage or uh, mar marginalized groups have cultural information and there's an enormous amount of metadata 
And beyond copyright laws, there are laws about use and reuse of this data. And there's all sorts of uh, codes of contact that are external from the creators. So a lot of efforts are being rolled out to help these communities who are marginalized and who are underrepresented to help them to uh, correct and protect the data about them. So there is a flux of data in this commons area that is more respectful and more conscientious. Now let's talk about private information and data protection. When we use the internet, without knowing it, we contribute an enormous amount of data to different applications. But copyright can also continue to restrict freedoms, but at Creative Commons, we have a different approach. We are looking into this issue at present in particular. And I'm getting it near to the end of my presentation. Let's talk about the COVID-19 pandemic. The main challenge for being more open when it comes to science and healthcare is that individual data from individual patients. We need to find a balance between sharing data and uh, protecting personal information. Because of course, sharing the data helps researchers and ex expedites uh, discoveries. Here again, the question has not fully been decided on. There is no doubt that open sharing of data remains the best way to, for example, inform the population when uh, fake news uh, is rampant. In conclusion, open, free, universal access to information, to knowledge, to culture and data completely is completely a game changer when it comes to tackling global problems. For example, climate emergencies and the COVID-19 pandemic. It helps scientific cooperation, and it also supports historically marginalized and underrepresented communities. And in this uh, health crisis, Creative Commons is more important than ever because without universal, open, free access to organi public organizations, research um, organizations, and data, how are we going to access information and use it effectively to tackle these issues around the world that affect all of us?